So this is part two, the Inkscape graphic for um, the exposure triangle. And you know, for those of you not at hearts, this is just a, a part of an assignment to go over a couple of things, uh, how to do uh, various operations in Inkscape. So one of the things we're going to do is we have the triangle, it's centered, we have the background, it's locked. Um, the next part was to put a title over the center of the triangle, an oval. And that's going to be with the oval tool. Um, doesn't matter how I draw the oval, what shape it is, because I can always change it after it's drawn. And here I'm going to, let's make it green. Uh, I did that by clicking the eyedropper button, and then whatever you click will turn that color. Or maybe let's go with a darker brown. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll use that, maybe even darker than that. And then we'll put some text over the, over the center that says exposure triangle. So I'm going to draw the text over here. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use the text box. I'm just going to use a line of text. And then I'm going to change the font and size to something different. And over here I have the text tool turned on. You can either go text text and font, or you can select over here. And let's see, here we go. Um, it looks all right. And then you click apply, and it applies whatever changes you made. And let's put that, I'm gonna use my select tool and move this over the, the oval. And now I notice that my oval is a little bit too short. So I'll make it bigger. And then I'm going to select both the, tri the um, text and the oval and use the Align and Distribute tools, which you can find either Object, Align and Distribute all the way down there, or if it's already been opened, one of the tabs up here is Align and Distribute. And I'm going to select Page because I want to center everything with the triangle. And so it's been slay, so one of the options is first selected, but Page is what I want, and then I just click on this, and if I mouse over it, it says Center on Vertical Axis. So now there's the object. Now I'm going to change that to first selected because I want to center the oval and the text together. So now that's centered. And since they're both selected, I'm going to control G, which will group those things together into one thing. And now they're grouped into one thing, and I'll move it down a little bit. If I hold the control key while I drag, notice it snaps to the center line. So I'm going to keep that control key push down while I drag, and there's that. Um, actually, I'm going to ungroup it because now I want the control shift you will ungroup, and because I want to change the, the text to a lighter color. So there we go, exposure triangle. The next step is I want to uh, make a, the titles for each of the items, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So for that, I'm just going to do that again. So again, I'm just going to click once. Aperture, and then I'm going to highlight that and decide what font I want for that. And I've been using, for the demonstrations, I've been using Bauhaus 93 and 36 point font because that Bauhaus looks better at 36. And there's that. Now, rather than trying to draw another one and change the font, I'll just copy this and paste it. One interesting thing about Inkscape is when I paste, I paste wherever the mouse is. So, and I'll move the mouse down here, Control-V, and now I've got my three items. And then all I have to do is go in here, and one of the things with the select tools, if I double click, it turns into the, whoops, if I double click, it turns into the, the text tool when I'm clicking on text. And then ISO, and go down here, and um, shutter speed. So now I have aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. Um, there were, in the sample, there are some um, descriptions underneath. But for those, I need a text box. The text box I'm, is when you use the text tool, instead of just clicking once, I click and drag, which makes a box. So when I type, it's going to be a paragraph where the, word, the lines wrap around the next line. So wrap, W-R-A-P, not the other kind. Um, so control
So I've typed out the, the phrase that should go under aperture. And notice that the outline of the box turned red. That's because I typed beyond the box. Two ways to solve that. If I mouse over with the, with the text tool turned on, there's a little plus sign around uh, the upper left-hand corner of the text tool. If I put that over the little box there, I can change the size of the box. And now you can see how the, the, the um, text formatting changes. Uh, arrangement into, and then I want, because this is just going to be a little tiny paragraph under everything, I'm going to make it 12 point font and Arial, just for now. And apply, and so now there's my, my text, and I'm going to get my text tool here and find my, my little, uh oh, what is it? Change that there, and then you see there's a lot of space between the two lines. That's up here with spacing. Spacing? No, I'm sorry, it goes up with lines. Let me just get the minus sign here and change the amount of space between lines. So it looks good. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to I want to avoid a paragraph where one word is sticking out on the on the, the last line. So I want to change that so it's either um, well that looks pretty good. Or if I want two lines, I'll go there. All right. And then I'll make the box a little bit smaller. Oh, no, that looks better. I'll go with that. All right. Now, I want this aperture word associated with the, the, the um, text. So I'm going to click on aperture first. I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the, that uh, uh, paragraph. I'm going to use my alignment tool. It's already on first selected, and I'll just click that. So that little group of text is, is um, selected, and it's um, grouped together. Then it, you know, it's aligned with each other. I'll group it, um, and then I want to rotate it. Rotating is object transform, almost all the way down here. And it's also this little symbol right here. So I have move, scale, rotate, skew, and matrix. And You'll eventually learn about those. Rotate. Um, because this is an equilateral triangle, the angles are 60 degrees each, because a triangle, 180 degrees total, three angles, all equal, 60 degrees. So then I'll change this angle to 60, and then click Apply. And that's not enough. So let's Control-Z. Anytime I do something that I want to get out of, I'll just Control-Z and undo it. So it's actually, because it's going clockwise all the way around, it's actually 300 degrees and then apply. And so it spins all the way around to that orientation. And the reason I do that, rather than trying to click and see, I can, I can rotate this manually, but that's not going to get the exact 60 degrees I want. And with, the, with, the, um, with using that manual, uh, with that, um, doing that uh, with the rotation tool, I get exactly 60 degrees, exactly what I want. So if I go over here to ISO, I would put the text box in underneath and then continue on. All right, so uh, the, the last little bit is the line of text where it's uh, give the shutter speeds, the apertures, and the ISOs. And I just wanted to show, I'm going to go to the text tool somewhere. I've lost my text book tool. Here we are. I was looking for T for text, but it's not. And I want a line of text. So I'm just going to click once. And then I'll do the shutter speeds, one, half, Quarter, eighth, doing right, fifteenth, thirtieth, sixtieth, one twenty fifth, um, two fiftieth, five hundredth, one thousandth. So that's obviously too big. So we'll highlight that and go back to my text tool and make it the 12 point font. Arial 12, apply. And now it's too short. So one thing in graphics programs and in graphic design, do not ever use spaces to space out your text so it looks the way you want it to look because when you change fonts, like if you wanted to change fonts, oh, I want to change some other fonts, the spaces of those fonts aren't always proportional, so then your spacing of your text would change. 
what you want to do is go to your text tool somewhere right here, um, highlight your text, and then go to spacing. And right here is spacing between words. If you mouse over it, it should say spacing between words in pixels. So I've already found out that I think 15 is the, nope, not enough. So let's go to 20, 30? 30 points, there are 30 pixels. So now, instead of trying to use the space key and space that out, or if I wanted to add more shutter speeds, I'd adjust that. Um, but instead of trying to space that out uh, with the space key, I'm just using the, the graphics tools that, it, that will modify the text to get that to come out right. And then the final step is to, against the page, center it. Well, actually, I was pretty close already. Um, so that's one thing. I, one thing I forgot to mention is when you've got text in a box um, and you want to center the text, be sure to, not this doesn't count for the paragraph, but for the titles, be sure to use the centering tool to center the text in the box. It doesn't really, see it changes just a little tiny bit. So now if I center that on the page, it's slightly different than it would be if, I, if, if the text was left justified or right justified. So I want to center all the little titles, and I didn't do that already. I want to center all the little titles in their respective um, boxes so that when I center the title, it, wherever I want to center it, it's actually centered. Because sometimes it'll be slightly to the left or slightly to the right. Um, there's more text to put on here, but the, the basics are getting the text spaced out using the spacing, um, justifying the text, changing the fonts around, and then rotating objects. So uh, like rotating ISO. So rotating ISO, I just click on the rotation tool. In this case, I want 60. And apply. And now my, my ISO title is perfectly lined up with that. Now the reason I, wouldn't, I, I don't want to do that yet is I want to put the, the text that explains what ISO is below it and then carry on. But that's the, that's the basics of what the next step of the project is. So uh, any questions, of course, ask me. Thank you.